Can everybody hear me okay? Right on. So, um, I love Jeff's speech earlier because it made me think about the days before I started TriTech. We actually, uh, I had a small uh, consulting business, and some of you actually may remember one of our first products we came out with was a product called McWrench, which was a vehicle fleet maintenance program that ran on the Macintosh. Remember the little Macintosh SE about this big? And I did some consulting work um, around San Diego before we really became a, a software company per se. And I remember doing some work uh, to try and move this uh, little teeny office with one assistant in it over from Word or from WordPerfect to Word. And, and I, you know, so I sat there with this woman and I was trying to show her, okay, this is so easy, right? Because she was used to her DOS computer and all those codes and everything. And, and I said, look, look, this is so much easier. Okay, you just take this mouse and you just point it. And let's say you wanted to take that word and make it bold. You just double click it and click on the bold button at the top. And she's like, finally she broke it. I can't do it. I can't. And she started crying. I was like, what? What is wrong? And she goes, where are all my codes? I need the codes at the bottom. She just couldn't understand the concept of having a visual user interface. That was just so, so weird for her. And, and I agree with Jeff that that's, I, I love the analogy of sort of going from this old, you know, sort of linear, siloed kind of mentality to kind of where we are today. And I think that uh, even though we haven't seen uh, the fruits of that, at least in the way they're ultimately turning out, I think there's nothing better that we can kind of think about in, in the future of where we're going that's really going to impact this industry. So it just, it made me think about, when I started to think about what I was going to talk about this year, I always go back and I look at the last 12 months and I say, well, what were the things that really changed about this industry over the last 12 months? And, and sometimes it's, it's bad things, right? It's things like hurricanes, natural disasters, you know, a bad economy. Um, and, and other times, it could be things that are technologically different, right? So back in the day, when we went from not having on-screen mapping systems to having GIS systems, that was a huge catalyst in our industry, right? And it was pretty easy back then to see that once we had this technology, we were going to be able to move into a whole new realm that was going to affect dramatically what we do uh, in our daily lives in this industry. Um, this year, I think there's so many things that happened, it was really difficult for me to figure out how those things are going to shape the next 12 months. So, instead, what I thought about is not so much what is going to shape us, but how are we going to react over the next 12 months to whatever comes our way? And, and it really struck me when I sat down and thought about it that it really doesn't matter even so much, in my opinion, what we do. It matters how we do it. In other words, a, a good company, a company that is on the road to great, can always adapt and change and shift and react to what's going on regardless of what hits us. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that TriTech is a great company. But I think we're a good company. But I do think that we have the right stuff to become a great company. And so what I want to talk to you about today is what does that path look like? And how do we think as a company about our responsibility to change and adapt and grow to become that great company? So first of all, I think we've got to figure out what does it mean to be great? Can, we, can you actually be great today? I don't think so. Uh, greatness is something that you either were or you could be, right? I mean, if you think about it, if you're great today, you're done. You're, there's nothing more for you to do, right? You, you can't be great and strive to be greater. No, you're already great, right? So if you look behind you, you can think about ways in which you were great. You can think about great presidents. You can think about great people. You can even think about great products or great companies. But you got to kind of look back over the test of time and say, wow, that's a great thing or a great company because we know now that in hindsight, they were great. But 
but you can strive for greatness, right? You can have the vision, and you can look forward, and you can say, this is where we want to be, right? So I want to be a great company. But it's important to realize greatness is a journey, right? It's not a state. It's not a state today. So even when I'm writing a speech, you think about it, it's kind of a journey for me. I, I go through and I think about a lot of stuff, and then I start to write some notes, and then I, I put together all my thoughts on a couple pieces of paper, and it's a, it's a random journey, right? It, and you're not quite sure where you're going to go until you get there. So when I started to think about what I was going to talk about this year, I was at home, and I grabbed a notebook from the kitchen. And I, I grabbed it, and I just started writing some notes because I had a lot of stuff in my head. I needed to get them down. So after I spent a few minutes jotting down some thoughts, I looked up at the top of the page, and there was the word artichoke on the top of the page. So I, I okay, I get it. I grabbed uh, the beginning of a grocery list, right? So I just, okay, great. I'm going to keep going, right, writing my thoughts. But then it, it bugged me because there's this word artichoke at the top of my notes. And I was like, why is the word artichoke? It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have anything to do with my speech. So I drew a line. I said, okay, separate the artichoke from the speech, right? And, and then I worked and worked, but, but it, it was there. It was, the artichoke was there in my mind, and I couldn't get it out. So what does an artichoke have to do with TriTech? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely. There is nothing. And I, but I said, look, okay, what is an artichoke? I, I, lo I love artichokes. Who loves artichokes? Okay. Now, some people, how many of you have never had an artichoke? Right? It's a weird vegetable. I mean, it's not something you just go grab out of your garden, right? Nobody grows, they may grow an artichoke in their garden. It's a weird, yeah, somebody, somebody does. Uh, it's possible. But here's the thing about artichokes. They're really good to eat. They're not really attractive, right? Um, and, and I think they're best when you just make them simple, right? In other words, I don't like them barbecued or breaded or stuffed. It, you know, just a steamed artichoke that's made really well, a little bit of butter, maybe a little bit of mayonnaise. That's great. I think an artichoke is great. But what, what makes an artichoke so great? Well, an artichoke, first of all, has a single purpose, right? It's there for me to eat. Right? It doesn't have any other purpose. It, it doesn't perform some other function. You can't make glue out of it. You can't make a computer out of an artichoke. It's very, very focused. You can, you can cook them with other things, but really, if you look at the menu, if something has an artichoke in it, the name of the thing on the menu is artichoke something. Right? It's not like tempura with artichokes. No, it's artichoke tempura. It's artichoke risotto. It's artichokes, right? It has its own identity and a purpose, and it's very sort of single-focused and single-minded. So they're hard to make. They're thorny. They got thorns on top of them, right? They're kind of stringy on the outside. If you don't make an artichoke right, it's funky. It gets all stringy and weird. It doesn't taste very good. So you have to be a good chef to know how to make an artichoke. But when you get it right, the results are pretty good. It's very rich. It's a nice thing. It's great. Like an artichoke's great. So again, what do artichokes have to do with TriTech? Really nothing. Except Mike Neighbors bet me five bucks that I couldn't put artichokes in my speech. <laughs> no. Okay. That's, that's just wrong. Okay, let's talk about pennies. <laughs> Do pennies have a purpose? No, they don't. There's no purpose to pennies. This would say, I wonder how much money it would save. Somebody's done this. I heard it the other day. What would you save if you got rid of pennies in the currency system? It's something like a billion dollars a year. Anyway, thank you, Mike. So I officially did it. I put artichokes in my speech. But the point is, is, is great. What is great, right? I think TriTech has experienced some moments of greatness uh, in its past, right? We've done some things that historically, in hindsight, you could say are pretty great. When we first came out with Visicat on Windows, back in 1993, 
It had a graphical user interface. It had a mapping system, which really was very cutting edge for its time. Um, it allowed people to finally see and, and visualize their units right on the map in their exact location. We actually had um, vehicle tracking even back in 1993. It wasn't through GPS. It was using a more primitive method. But nevertheless, that was great. And clearly, that is the foundation of what we've built on over these years. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't be here today. Um, when we introduced our first mobile product, um, we allowed the, the people in the field to see not just where they were, but we gave them a picture of where all of the units were, right? So right on the map from the mobile, the incident commander could see all of their resources and tell what was going on in the system. That was pretty early on in the evolution of mobile, and at the time, that was great. Um, when we implemented the Austin Project, which was our first big attempt at a major metropolitan police force, we had a rough time with that installation. You could probably talk to the folks at Austin and they'll go back and relive that. I do not want to relive that, but it was great because it showed that the company could get to that point. We were the only, if you think about it, we're the only software company in this industry that went from small, meaning very, very small tier three implementations all the way up into tier one. No other vendor has done that in this industry. We were awarded CHP, and their first center went live this year. Uh, they're the largest law enforcement agency, largest state law enforcement agency in the world. That was pretty great. It was a great accomplishment for us. When we did our first overseas installation, that was in Staffordshire, England, that was the very first uh, high-performance ambulance service in the UK. And the only way they could have done that was with our software. I'm not saying that we were the entire catalyst, but if they didn't have our software, they wouldn't have had the tools in place to be able to do what they needed to to get to be a high-performance EMS system. That was great. Those are great accomplishments. But the yardstick for greatness is always changing, and you have to continue to strive to do better or you're not going to get there. 